Welcome back to my Harry Potter movie rankings. The bottom three movies on my list were easy to rank. We had two movies tainted by David Yates and the introduction movie. Now we are getting into some hardcore Harry Potter. These four movies aren't as easy to rank. I could make a case for each one of them to be the top movie on my list. I will do my best to explain my position. Number four on my official Harry Potter rankings is Harry Potter and the Chamber of secrets. This movie holds a special place in my heart. I enjoyed the first Harry Potter, but it was the second movie that got me really into the franchise. Back in high school, hanging out with the guys, we'd get high in the Forbidden Forest and then watch movies. A few times, we'd watch Harry Potter. Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets is the movie that really stuck out to me in that altered state of mind. I don't know why, but this made me laugh uncontrollably. You're never going back to that school. You're never gonna see those freaky friends of yours again. Never! As well as this. The journey is escaping! Ah! Ah! I'm going to Harry. Come here! Let go of me! Oh no! You and that bloody pigeon aren't going anywhere! Get off! Drive! Right, drive! Right. Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets is everything you'd like a sequel to be. It's Harry Potter 2.0. It's bigger and better. There's a better story, better acting. There's more at stake. It's darker. We have a connection with these characters and are happy to see them again on screen in this movie. The scene in the bookstore is really good. Malfoy is Malfoy 2.0. He's even more of an asshole and funnier in this movie. I bet you love that, didn't you, Potter? Famous Harry Potter. Can't even go into a bookshop without making the front page. Leave him alone. Oh, look, Potter. You've got yourself a girlfriend. Then there's Lucius Malfoy. Fantastic character. Now, now, Draco, play nicely. Mr. Potter. Lucius Malfoy. I love how there's a subtle shot of him putting Tom Riddle's diary in Ginny Weasley's cauldron. Associating with muggles. And I thought your family could sink no lower. Professor Lockhart, I am not a fan of. His scenes drag the movie down for me. I know he's in the book, but call it a plot hole. Surely Dumbledore knew he was a fake. Mentioned in my review of The Sorcerer's Stone, Potter and Malfoy had a rivalry going in the first two movies. Slytherin made Malfoy, a second year student, their new seeker. It's up for debate whether they put him on the team because of his rich father. Training for the ballet, Potter! But Malfoy proved to be a decent seeker over his career at Hogwarts. The Quidditch match in this movie is intense. It's fun to see him going back and forth with Potter. You'll never catch me, Potter! You'll never catch me, Potter! Malfoy ends up losing, but I don't think that's too embarrassing. Harry's got a little more experience, and they shouldn't have been flying in such a dangerous area. Malfoy Why gets a chance at revenge in the dueling club. Scared Potter. You wish. Inverted statue! This is the first time we're seeing spells used in combat in the world of Harry Potter. And it was a lot cooler than the Order of the Phoenix. Rick the Sempra! <laughs> Both get shots in on each other. Malfoy's was a bit cheap. Seven sort here! But he did summon a snake. I don't know if Harry knew how to destroy that snake. If Snape didn't intervene, this snake could have fucking killed Harry Potter. 
So for all the Malfoy haters, Malfoy didn't lose any points in this duel. He held his own. While we're still on Malfoy, I really enjoyed the scene in the Slytherin common room. Malfoy is a lot darker in this movie. He's racist against those Muggleborns, and he wants to see death. The last time the Chamber of Secrets was opened, a mudblood died. So it's only a matter of time before one of them is killed this time. As for me, I hope it's Granger. Sadly, this is where Malfoy peaks. His character is never the same after this movie. Malfoy just becomes a weak little bitch. The rivalry with Potter is not developed much more. Harry Potter going into the diary is trippy. I thought Tom Riddle was great in this movie. The story progresses nicely, there's a lot of suspense. This interaction with Tom Riddle and Harry Potter is one of the best in the series. The big reveal at the end is shocking. A memory of Voldemort is causing all this shit. And to make it even deeper, the diary is a horcrux and we find that out four movies later. Again, there was some major plot armor with the Sorting Hat and Fox, but Harry Potter destroyed the Basilisk, destroyed the horcrux, and saved the school again. In his first two years, he saved the school twice and survived encounters with Voldemort. He's still arguably overrated fake news, but Harry Potter is living up to the hype. Then Harry confronts Lucius Malfoy. Dobby is free. I love how Lucius Malfoy threatens to kill a 12 year old in Hogwarts outside of Dumbledore's office. Your parents were meddlesome fools. Mark my words, Potter. One day soon, you are going to meet the same sticky end. And what was the spell he was casting? This didn't happen in the books, but in the movie version, it's clear he's going to use the killing curse. One of the flaws in this movie is I understand how a lot were petrified, but no one died. I think that was a little unrealistic given the threat. More people should have died. The Chamber of Secrets was dark, but the story still maintains the childish world that was set up by Chris Columbus in the first movie. The sequels bust through that and we get to more adult situations and death. And then to cap it all off, Harry Potter 2.0, we get Leaving Hogwarts 2.0, which is much more epic than the first one. What was your opinion on the Chamber of Secrets? Where do you rank this movie? Join the project.